Hello, my name is Tim Enneking and I'm the Managing Director of Digital Capital Management. Today's video blog is going to focus on the modern incarnation of parallel currencies. Previously we talked about Roman armies and more modern armies handing out script as well as barter. But that's all history. How does that, what is the transition into modern times? Well the fact is parallel currencies have existed since the age of electronics and still exist today. What are some examples? If you buy with Amazon and get your Amazon points or reserve on Expedia and get your Expedia points, or if you fly with any airline and get frequent flyer miles, those are all parallel currencies. And it's very interesting to look at the evolution of those. Uh, let's take frequent flyer miles. They've been around the longest. They've been around well, probably 40, 45 years now. Initially, you could only exchange them for uh, other airline tickets and you can only earn them through flying, actually getting on the aircraft and flying. Now you can earn them all sorts of different ways. You can earn them renting cars, you can earn them in hotels, you can earn them by spending on your, uh, spending on your branded uh, credit card, and you can also earn them flying. And you can spend them, and you can get airline tickets, or you can get hotel rooms, or you can get any other, uh, almost any other item related to travel. But most interestingly, there's also a secondary market for frequent flyer miles. So you can sell your frequent flyer miles. You can actually use them on airline, on airline sites to buy a whole variety of goods and services. So frequent flyer miles have clearly evolved to become an almost universal parallel currency. And to the extent they're not universal, you can sell them for fiat and buy anything you can buy with fiat. So there you have a wonderful transition on a historical parallel currency to a modern parallel currency, which has really turned almost into a currency in and of itself. But the almost uh, is important. Then you look at cryptocurrencies, which are very much a continuation of that. So a little bit about the history of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, as most people know, was, is about 10 years old, so founded in 2009. Coincidentally or not, after the what's now been dubbed the Great Recession. But Bitcoin, or BTC, was far from the first uh, uh, incarnation of cryptocurrency. As near as I can tell, based on the research I've done, the first cryptocurrency was actually invented in Holland in 1998. And there are more recent cryptocurrencies where there are some German towns that have minted their own script, really, that acts as a currency for every all goods and services within that town. And there are, they are very long, very funny German names for for the cryptocurrencies. I mean, they're funny in German because they're sort of half a joke and they've taken off. And so we have even new cryptocurrencies that have nothing to, or new currencies, parallel currencies, that have nothing to do with cryptocurrency that are being developed even today. So the, the history from, from Romans to barter to script in World War II to frequent flyer miles to frequent buyer rewards extends very, very much up to including cryptocurrency. So there is a lot of precedent for uh, cryptocurrencies. The last point I'll make in this regard is that there's also precedent for currencies not being backed by anything because cryptocurrencies, except for the few that are that are now called asset-backed tokens or security tokens, which started out as a subset of cryptocurrencies and now will probably eclipse even the market value of cryptocurrencies. Ignoring that for the moment, money has been backed less and less by anything over time. Uh, few people know that during the Great Depression, most countries reduced their the backing of their currency by, by gold. And it started in the United States with Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and actually in the 1930s it was illegal to own gold in the United States. What happened over time was, instead of being 100% backed by gold, the dollar was 90%, 80%, 70%, etc. cut down over time. And what happened on August 15, 1971, is Richard Nixon finished what Franklin Delano Roosevelt started and took the United States off the gold standards, which means it was not backed by anything. Coincidentally, and or not coincidentally, at that point in time, owning gold, physical gold, became legal again in the United States. So what you see, what you see now is all fiat currencies, which are not, or none of which are backed by anything. It's full faith and credit, if you will, and that's all. And you have frequent flyer miles, you have frequent buyer points, they're also not backed by anything. There is nothing, if the company goes bankrupt or if the, if the airline refuses to honor its frequent flyer miles, there'll be some contractual arguments about it, 
but those frequent flyer miles, those buyer points, are not backed by anything at all. So in the next installment, we're going to look at how the, the fact of being not backed by anything has allowed or allowed the development of, of new fiat currencies, which very much heralded and predicted the advent of cryptocurrencies. Thank you very much.